Hello and welcome to this lesson from the GCSE P portal. Today we're going to be looking at the pathway of air and we have one, two, three, four, five, six different places or location that air has to pass through during the process of air coming from the environment around us to get inside of our lungs just before it enters the capillaries and oxygen is taken around the body. But before we get there, in another video, we're going to look at the pathway of air from outside to into our lungs via these six steps. And to start with, we have the nose and mouth. So if I just, well, obviously show you where the nose and mouth are, we all know that, on the front of our face. They're, there, they're, the, they're the first, or they're the entrance way for air to get into our body. And it's not this magical process that we just breathe and we live. We have to have all of these separate components working in an order and all working by themselves for air to actually get in effectively. We've got other processes going on to call the mechanics of breathing, but again, we'll get to that in another video. But it's important to note that if one of these goes wrong, chances are breathing is going to become very difficult. Okay, there's, there's sort of lots of parts to it, and it's important for each one to do their own separate role. In the case of the nose and the mouth, their purpose, or the role that they play, is the first stage of filtering. So if I just put up here, filter. Because we've got little hairs inside of our nose, and we've got saliva and fluid inside of our mouth, and they're there to catch large, bulky particles, such as pollen. It's to prevent them from going any further through the pathway and ending up inside our lungs. Because we don't want foreign objects inside of our lung, inside our lungs, because it's difficult to get them out. So they're there to prevent things from entering the second stage. That's one, the second stage, which is our trachea, okay, or trachea. This is, the, this is our wind pipe. So it's the main pipe that connects, or it, it connects where the, na or the nasal passage and the back of the throat converge. That's where the trachea starts. Okay, that's this blue pipe that runs down through our neck here. And this has got rings of cartilage around it. Okay, so it's protected because if there was an impact or a force that happened on our windpipe and that became crushed, then air isn't going to be able to get past it, there's going to be a blockage, and suddenly no air is going to make it into the lungs. So it's ringed with cartilage, that tough, fibrous, rubbery tissue is wrapped around it to prevent it from collapsing. On the inside of the trachea, there is in fact some, or a substance called mucus. I'm going to spell that wrong, there's the U there. Mucus. Now, mucus serves the role of collecting debris and even finer particles that made it through the nose and mouth. Okay, it's quite sticky, and there are some sort of microscopic hairs running down the inside of the trachea as well. And it's there to catch any dust, any dirt, to again prevent it from getting any further down that pathway. Once air has finished in the, in the trachea, so it's got to the end of that blue section there, it now enters the bronchi. Okay, we've got two of these. They serve the role of dividing this air or the air up into each lung. Because obviously we've got two lungs, one on this side and one on that side. The bronchi divide that passage of air up in two so that each lung gets an equal volume of air. A separate one is called a bronchus, together we call them bronchi. They're also ringed with cartilage, okay? So they are tougher and thicker and they're, and they're, they're able to sort of resist forces so that they don't collapse and the air can make it through them. Once air has made it through them, we are now in the bronchioles, okay? So stage four, the bronchioles. These are smaller versions of the bronchi. Instead, so not instead, but this time they haven't got ringed walls of cartilage. So they're far smaller, they're far more fragile with the purpose of dividing this pathway of air or this airflow all around the lungs. Okay, their purpose is to, is to disperse this airflow deep into the left and right hand lung. The filtering is already done. We haven't got large airflows now going through each one because there's so many of them dividing this airflow up. So they're, they're really small and they start to splint around and they reach out into the far corners and crevices of the lungs so that every part of it receives a little bit of this, of, of the airflow that's coming in each breath. Once that airflow has been delivered down those bronchioles, we've now got 
the alveoli. So stage five, the alveoli. If we were to zoom in at one of these, we'd be looking at, oh, put it in a different color, something that looks a little bit like bubble wrap. Just bubbles, tiny sacks of air. They're one cell thick, they're absolutely tiny. And we've got millions, if not billions of these. If we were to take out some adult lungs and we were to burst each one and flatten them out like, oh, what's it called, Terry's chocolate orange. So flatten that all out from a spherical shape into a flat shape and then put them down next to each other. We have the same surface area or approximately the same surface area as half a tennis court. That's how many of them there are. They're microscopic, but they're there to collect this air that's made its way in from all the way up in our nose and mouth. They're there to collect this air, and it just stays in them for a, a, a well, a breath, you know, the difference between an inhale and an exhale. And from there is where the blood goes past, and we start to get out oxygen from the air, and we start to deposit CO2 or carbon dioxide back into the air or back into the alveoli, ready to get rid when we exhale next. Okay? And obviously we've got the last one here, six, the lungs. Okay, so I've already mentioned that they are the two big things inside of which all of this is happening. But the role that they play is that they're attached to the rib cage. That's important because in order to breathe, we rely on pressure changes. And the way that we create pressure changes inside of our, our trunk or our thoracic cavity area is by moving the rib cage. By moving that into different positions, the lungs are then dragged behind the ribs because they're attached and they change shape. And as their shape changes, so does the air pressure inside them. So they might just be sat to there, but because they're attached to ribs, they suddenly become almost this, this vent. Because they're expanding and contracting in size, air pressures are fluctuating up and down, up and down, and that allows us to draw air in from the environment around us to actually fill our lungs with it. And that's that. Six stages, the nose and mouth, they filter. The trachea, it's there, it's protected, it connects the entranceway down, into, down inside of us, and it's ringed with cartilage to protect it, and it's covered in mucus and tiny hairs to filter further. The third step, we've got the bronchi, the two bronchus, which divide that airflow up into each lung. Then it divides the airflow further by passing it into the bronchioles, which are far smaller. They aren't ringed with cartilage, they're much smaller now and they then deposit the air into the millions of alveoli that reside in both lungs. The tiny sacs of air, one cell thick, and that's where gaseous exchange, which we'll come to in another video, that's where gaseous exchange starts to occur. And then all of this is occurring inside the lungs, and they're essential because they're attached to the rib cage. That moves, that causes the pressure difference, and that allows us to breathe. And that is the pathway of air. I hope that helped. And I hope to see you again soon.